All right, let's let's uh, let's go. So, a couple. Let me make a couple quick announcements. I sent, I sent, I just sent an email out a little bit ago, and you may want to pay attention to that. Take a look at the announcements page on the syllabus. But let me just make two important things. One, the quiz is on Thursday. Um, you you don't need to to take notes when you're reading or watching the videos. You don't need to read them or watch them twice. The key to this is to pay attention and really focus while you're reading or really focus while you're watching the video. And if you know those kinds of students who study the night before and they get A's and you've been studying all semester, the reason they're able to do that is because they're focusing while they're reading the material and thinking about it and really focusing. They have really good concentration. So that's the key to this. So it really is probably five hours of, of reading and watching videos. It's not much more than that. Um, but if you, as long as you just focus, you don't need to take notes. We're not asking for specific information. We're watching for, we're looking for things that will pop out if you just read it carefully one time or watch the video one time, okay? So keep that in mind. If you don't do that, if you don't read the readings, you'll, tr you'll just be guessing. There's no way to kind of scale it down from four answers to two or something like that. You just can't. So do the work you need to do. Um, and you can't have laptops open in class on Thursday. So the first half hour of class, you, you, you can't be studying. So anyway, that's where we're at Thursday, okay? We're good? Um, you have as much time as you need because I booked, if you, uh, if you don't have a class afterwards, I booked this class afterwards. So if you have a slow taste test taker, you can just sort of chill a little bit. And, okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is pack pack. You, we're not sending grades out each week. So I emailed a bunch of you last Friday who hadn't done anything or who got six points or four points or two points out of eight in that first week's assignments um, to let you know that you really need to make sure you understand how to do this. So um, but we are not putting grades up in Canvas each week for pack pack. So you really have to keep track of yourself. And um, if you don't, if you're not 100% certain you know what you're doing, talk to other people in your discussion group, bring it up or send an email to Taylor J and meet with her or, just figure it out. Talk to someone in class. Just make sure you got it. Or don't. C's earned degrees. It's fine. We're all going to die. It's, it's all good. Um, it's, but if you're concerned about that, you want to make sure you're, you're on top of it because you would have blown your free week already. So um, it's a really easy assignment. Um, make sure you do the word count. So even though you might get the curiosity points, if my team sees that you didn't do the word count, even if you got the curiosity points, um, you, we will take points off. So um, that's true starting right now. So if the first week you didn't do that, we're all right. We're good. Is that cool? Are we good? Um, so you, we've had a couple days off, and uh, man, we're rocking. I need, I need two volunteers uh, quickly. Uh, hang on. <laughs> I need no. I need someone who is uh, fairly staunch, not super staunch, but who comes down on the camp of creationism. Um, so, and I need someone who comes down in the camp of evolutionary thinking. I'm an evolutionary biologist. Oh my God, of course you are. Are you, what's that? So who would come, who like, who at, le at the very least leans toward, you know, here's one of these things. Can I just say this really fast? Um, you know how, I, I mentioned this earlier in the semester, and I, I, I'll say it again. People with more conservative ideas, or let's say you dare to appreciate some of what Donald Trump proposes in this world, um, in, an, in, a, in, an acad in an institution like Penn State, which definitely leans more liberal, um, you know, sometimes you can get shut down and get shut down by professor. I don't think it happens as... As, as much as a lot of people think that it happens, but it does happen, and students who are more conservative are generally more afraid to speak up in classes like this. You're just not going to speak up. So similar with people who believe in creationism, right? You're going to not speak up because you're going to think, okay, here's a class. We're talking about race. It's science. I mean, you're going to tend not to, to raise your hand. Um, so uh, whereas if you believe in evolution fundamentally or you come on down on that side, it's a lot easier to raise your hand. So 
and the creationism piece because you would assume that maybe I would come down and, well, of course, I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to bring anybody up front and, you know, hammer them in some way. So is there anybody that would could speak on behalf of creationism? Just you don't have to be like the thoughtful scholar, but is there anybody that could speak on behalf of creationism? Anybody who would do that? Dude, you got it? All right, man. And then I need someone who, who hasn't been up to the front who can do evolution. Who has someone who hasn't? Bro, is that you? Wait, have you you haven't been up to the front? Okay. Bro, c- come down. You haven't been up here. All right, come on up. All right. Hey, you can have a seat. Yeah. Bro, you can. So, what what's your name? I'm Justin. Justin. Nice meeting you, man. Nice Bro, what's your name again? You were up here before, right? I've never been up, but I asked a question. Oh, you did. All right. What's your name, George? Dude. All right, you ready? Have a seat, man. Okay, y'all. Uh, we're we're going to go through this fairly quickly because we're, we're, what we're going to be talking about today are physical features and bodies and change and so on. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, George, Tell me everything you know about evolution. No, hang on. No, we're going to start with Justin. Tell me everything you know. The God created all the living things in the world, and it's all part of the grand design that how everything is the way they are. And it's understandable, honestly. And where do creationists get their ideas from? In, in, the, in the sense that everything just fits into how we live and how the things are that there must be something that's behind all that. So like there's, so one perspective is there's some sort of, there's a design that we see. So there must be a design. It's really intricate and that's understandable. That somebody would design something that's so intricate. So for you, that's really understandable to take that position. Um, okay, George, what do you know about evolutionary thinking? Um, so evolution, uh, it's basically the idea that, um, like, life starts out, you know, at least, you know, billions of years ago, however, I think it's like three or four billion years ago, um, you know, single-celled organisms growing into, like, an evolving either through small, um, small genes um, over a long period of time or also modification of things like uh, home- homeotic genes, which would change, like, drastically the the development of life and uh-huh. it, you know branches off into other and not necessarily branches off but you know it's just how everything connects back to one organism uh-huh. uh, a lot of you know okay so and you come down in the camp of creationist thinking um well i'd more like to so like i don't i think i'm in i'm studying animal genetics so like obviously I have a strong understanding of evolution and that sort of thing, but I just really feel that like behind it all is like a creator. So in that sense, yes, creationism. I don't think the world was created in a week, but I do believe that um, something bigger than ourselves created it. So what I like about what you said when I asked you to, to it, it explains then what you study explains how you were able to say what you said about evolution because there are a lot of people I could have picked in this class who would identify as supporters of evolution who could never would never have been able to articulate it in the way that you did right so that's kind of cool bro what what do you what do you know about what, what else what, why do you come down on the side of evolution or how did you come down on that side so it's um those are honestly two conflicting ideas maybe because maybe not. I mean because if you're if you're Coming from the creationist side, it's Mm -hmm. saying that everything is the way they are since the beginning. And in the in the theory of evolution, there were intermediate species that came down from a branch and that are different from ours, maybe like ten thousand years ago or something. Mm -hmm. Like even if you look at people from maybe like a thousand years ago, they're a lot shorter than we are Mm -hmm. in in general, in average, a lot different than we are. Their lifestyles are different, and if you look at something like lacto- lactose intolerant people, there are a lot more people in Asia who are more lactose intolerant than we are right now. 
So, but so in other words, it's just like a really complex thing. So let me let me just say a couple. Th I'm just going to cut you off so we can keep going. Um, so let me just say a couple things. One of the a one of the great the great mysteries, and you pointed to this, right? It's like okay, so there is this grand design, and it's really hard not to come up with the idea of some kind of creator. And of course, that begs the question: Where did the creator come from, right? So you, it's sort of like the chicken and the egg, and you can just follow it in perpetuity, and then before you know it, you're just like you're on shrooms or something. So you just have no idea where you're going to get to, right? So, but it's really it's a cool it's a cool way it's a cool thought. Like you got to get there somehow, or it's really easy to get there. Evolutionary thinking, by the way, one of the reasons. So many of you who don't support or have questions about evolutionary theory. One of the reasons I think is the way we've often portrayed it, which is this kind of thing, like human beings evolved from apes and it's really that simple. And nobody really looks very, very deeply into it, right? Like George will because you're studying it, right? So you, you know, we got tens of, at this point in time, tens and tens upon tens of thousands of research papers and studies and people talking about it and the, the amount of data we have that paint a picture that points towards something, toward evolutionary process. It's just really immense. But look, just notice the kind of racism that's inherent in this. And this is, by the way, this is just this sort of one of these tiny little pieces of white supremacy that we don't necessarily even know it's there. And I would make the argument to those of you who are black and brown, in particular those of you who are black, um, who are disproportionately accept creationism as, as opposed to evolutionary thinking, is that most every picture that I ever see that, that depicts evolution, human beings evolving from ape, the, the highest, the most evolved human being is almost always a white person. And I mean, if you just Google, you just jump on your phones and go to Google image search and just look up evolution and you just see these pictures like this, even the jokes, it's always a white guy. So I'm thinking, well, this is, again, this is like this, I remember as a little kid asking myself this question, or as, it, you know, when I was your age, why is it always a white person, right? So imagine that you're not white and you're thinking, this theory is saying that I'm closer to the apes than white people are. That's sort of essentially what it is if you don't study. And of course, that's not what the theory is. And that it's infinitely more complex. And I only use that image just so we could talk about it, but... Um, but it really is, it's, a, it's just as both of you are saying, it's just immensely complex. And so what I, I, the reason I want to start here is because everything that we say for the rest of the day asserts um, the primacy of evolutionary thinking because creationist thinking in the end just believe, it, it depends on a belief system, right? Like you, you, have, it, it, you just have to believe it to be true. Like it says in a, some book that somebody wrote that, creation happened and there's a god and so on but that's it that's all you got you don't have any evidence you have nothing else in in evolutionary thinking we're building up a pretty deep pretty intense and complex body of evidence it's it still is it's it's a series of linked together hypotheses but it is nonetheless um something that's based on the scientific method so have you ever thought about the that white I don't know where Asian. Where's, what's your What's your family background? I'm from Korea. From Korea? I don't know where you. We are Koreans fit in that. You're like not even included. I mean that that kind of looks more yellow than white. Oh yeah, this one right? does. Right? That's just the image. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, what are you saying? Koreans are on top here, pal. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Maybe. Perhaps. You are actually. <laughs> Dude, you got faster internet than we do. So. Exactly. Yeah. Anything you want to add to it? Any, either of you read just really fast. Our the internet last speed is evolving faster than human beings are. What's that? Our, our internet speed is evolving faster than human beings are. Dude, it truly <laughs> is, man. Bro, anything? Yeah, just one thing to add. Um, like, obviously, like anything else, it's just a theory. And especially with, um, like, one thing I guess I lean towards, at least creationism, in the sense of, like, a creator, is because... Like, if you look at, like, the whole, like, I don't know if you all are familiar with, like, the, like, RNA world sort of thing and, like, the central dogma of biology, like, there's a lot of, like, it's a ridiculously, like, low chance that, like, all that would fit together perfectly, and I'd argue that there's just as good of a chance that there's a creator out there for the same reason. Dude, I know, exactly. I feel like that. I totally feel like that. And, but I also want to add... 
it's not just just a theory. A theory. It's a theory that's built upon a complex web of, of cross-cutting, interlocked hypotheses that fit together pretty nicely, just like reality itself. Nonetheless, it's really hard not to get to a place where it's so cosmic that we just imagine the whole thing itself is God. You know, whatever that is. So it's a cool, I, I like to imagine that. All right, gentlemen, thanks, man. We're going we're gonna to move on. Um, thanks, I appreciate it. So, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. Okay, so here's what we need. Let me just show you something. Here's the, here's the basic idea, you know, that, that we, you know, you, what, what, when, you, when you stand up here, when I stand up here and I look around the room and I just see these immense differences in people, just immense. You're all, you're all so different, different features, different faces. Before class, I was going around the room because I was looking for somebody of a particular ancestry and I was trying to look for particular facial types and just seeing the immense, the complexity of, of human beings and um, is the, the idea that we have in evolutionary thinking is that you know, right around here in the, this Nilotic region, human beings started to walk upright and then we started to move outwards and we, these are the patterns that we tend to see this way and then up here and then this way and most recently up into Northern Europe. And as people moved to different geographic regions, had experienced different foods, experienced different climates, experienced a lot of different diseases, all sorts of things. The body adapted and certain genetic traits were more adaptable to certain climates than other genetic traits. And some of the modifications happened as a direct result of climate differences, meaning that certain traits are more adaptable in certain regions, as therefore the people that were able to pass on those traits, their progeny got much stronger and were able to pass on those traits. And this is happening over thousands upon thousands and thousands of years, right? And so sometimes we have genetic mutations, though. And the genetic mutations are just something happens. Just like we all have mutations in our bodies. They're not all cancerous. Like we, we think about genetic mutation turns to cancer. There are a lot of genetic mutations that can happen. Maybe some of you have everybody in your family. They all look alike, but you don't. And you have this one thing. Maybe it's in your ear or maybe your toe or maybe whatever it is. I have no idea. Maybe it's just a genetic mutation. It just happened. And maybe you'll pass that on. And then that will go. And then years from now, suddenly that thing takes off. A lot of it just happened like that. But much of it we can trace to environmental factors and forces. Okay? So we have the idea. So for who's, who's uh, show me someone who's, who's, dark, who's Indian, like dark-skinned Indian, sub, or subcontinent, a, a subcontinent Asian. Who's dark-skinned from the subcontinent of Asian? Fairly dark-skinned. Wait. Dude. So like... Okay, sit here, stand up really fast. Can anybody dar turn around? So what, what's your name, bro? What is it? Sumer? Is anybody darker, anybody, any Southeast or South Asians darker than Sumer? Anybody in class? So, th but, so look at, yeah, you're, and you're not especially dark. The, the dark, for example, the, the dark, when we do, when we study sk skin pigmentation and skin tone and we take m readings of skin, we generally take the reading underneath the arm here because that's going to be the purest. Because this, like, never gets the sun. I mean, even, you think about it. Those of you, just give me one second here, right, for us to just stand awkwardly, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> so what happens is, um, unless even those of you, mostly white people who like to suntan, think about all the times that you try to do your underarms and you can't lay like that very long. It just doesn't happen. So when we take readings, we take readings here. And when we do that, what we find is really pretty much the darkest skinned people in the world are from this. They're not in Africa. They're actually over here where we see darker skin tone. And so, um, so your skin is fairly dark, but not close to like, yeah, you've probably seen some. Yeah, get, your skin gets dark in the summer. Yeah. And like, do you have people in your family with really, they're all lighter skin? Yeah, dude, I've seen Indians who, who are as dark as your hair. You know what I mean? In the summertime. So, right? You know what I mean? And so like just almost black and that in a different way than is true in say like in Africa. Okay. Yeah. Have a seat really fast. So do, or 
So when we think skin, don't just, you know, th- you, we have to spread ourselves out. Like we, we watch how people adapted going to different regions. Or like, dude, Victor, here. Or who, who is, who, here, stand up really fast. Can you, is the battery working? All right, dude, come, come. Uh, is, who else is in, is, Victor, Victor, you're from Mexico, right? Your family's from Mexico, and who? Anybody else who is, who is, South American or Latin American who, has Indian blood? Anybody else? Who you know you have Indian blood? Well, here, come here a second. I'll just come in this in this. Uh, I don't know if we have enough light here. So take pull, pop your glass. So look at look at his face right here. No, look right in the camera. All right. Um, <laughs> And you can see, so look, you can see Asian, can you see Asian features in him? Like turn, <laughs> turn to the side, <laughs> turn to the side, look that, look at yourself, right? Look, at, look, at, look here, right? Just, but he definitely, it's not pure Asian features, right? But you can see, like in his eyes, okay, turn back here. And yeah, look right in the camera. Oh, dude, thanks, man. Yeah. And you see, you, you can see like the, we're going to talk about eyes in a second, but like the moment I saw him sitting there, I mean, I knew he was, he had Indian blood from the Americas, right? And so what happens here is the, the Americas were populated by people crossing the Bering Strait. You can look at this, by the way, bro. And so Americans populated by people crossing the Bering Strait. So if we do DNA tests on Siberians right here, or Native Americans, Native Alaskans right here, then they're going to have the exact same DNA. But these are Native Americans and these are Siberians. They're Asians. And yet if we did, we took two people, one on one side of the Bering Strait, one on the other. They're different in terms of their nationality, in terms of their culture, but they're going to be genetically almost exactly the same. And so what we see in his features, and you can see this because you clearly have indigenous blood, Native American blood. And so what you see is, this is these are features that came out of Asia and over into the Americas, and then his family ended up here in Mexico. And, you know, you, you, you may have some white features with blood. Do you have, do you have uh, Europeans in your family? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah? But I do have lighter skin uh, family members. Like than other really family members? But, yeah, you can really see your nose and your eyes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. And so when you, when you know, what you see then is really the complexity of all of these things. So when you just look at someone, you don't necessarily know who they're, where they're from or how they're from. You know what I mean? So do you, what do you call, so what, should, what, what, what group are you, like, do you know your ancestry in Mexico? Or like what state they're from? Or nah, just your culture. Because there are like 200 languages spoken in Mexico. So does your family only speak sp- Spanish? Yeah. yeah. Castellano? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm Spanish. Sorry, yeah. All right. All right, dude. Thanks, man. Um, so here, let me show you. See that, I asked him, see, you, I asked you if you spoke Castellano because this is the, the Familia Castilla in Spain. So these, you know, these are the folks that are, that w- went out into the world and conquered the, so c- conquered so-called the new world. So they talk about the, the language isn't just Spanish, it's Castellano, right? But, you know, you're speaking Spanish and they're speaking, no, we're speaking Castellano, right? So in Spain, right? So this is quite, okay, so anyway, here, um, Here's what I need. I need a biology science, a biology student, someone who hasn't volunteered yet, a, just a biology major, a general science major. And are there any anthropologists here? Give me a science major and a biology major. Just, are you, what are you? Science dude, come down front. Give me a biology major. Who's biology? Anybody? Someone from the top, biologist. We're gonna put, you're going to go in the back room. Give me, can I get a biologist? Seriously? Who's a biology student? You're a biology student? Okay, come on, come on down the front. Who's, a, any anthropology students? Any anthropology majors? Any sociology majors? God. Seriously? Philosophy? Any philosophy majors? All right, dude, in that case, we're going to take Simon. 
All right, here. Come, come this way. Yeah, dude, we're taking you. Mom. Here, you guys, all three of you, come in the back. Oh, yeah, can you go back here? Just go through that door, and I'll come back for you in a second. Okay, you ready? So here's what I need. I need, I need someone who's uh, from the, who's South Asian, just kind of, actually, bro, now we're going to go with you. Yeah, the Hong Kong, I have Hong Kong, dude. So I need, I need someone who's, I need someone who kind of looks like this, oh man, I need someone who looks like this guy. Dude, you, right there, look at you. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. Oh my God, this is beautiful. All right, and then I need, oh my God. Okay, go down to the front. And then I need, uh, I need two, two, people, two Africans. Just two people of African, no, no, African ancestry, it doesn't really matter. Oh, really? Okay, perfect, yeah, yeah. No, you and her, yeah, both of you. All right, perfect. And then I need two, uh, just, how about you, how about you two, right there? You're perfect. Yep. Okay. So mix yourselves up. Okay. Anyway, listen, just really fast. Uh, your name and your ancestry? Mike and uh, German and Chinese. Uh-huh. Uh, Alex and German, Irish. German, Irish? Yeah. Maimuna and I'm Guinean. Guinean. Hannah, Nigerian. Wait, where are you from? Nigeria. Nigeria? Cameron and you want to? Yeah, do you know where you're from? Yeah, my dad's German and Irish, my mom's Polish and Russian. Whoa, all right. I'm Francesca, and I'm from Italy, Milan. You're f Wait, you're actually from Italy? I'm actually, yeah, from Italy. Ooh, man. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, I'm going to use you. Hang on, ha just have a seat really fast. Or you can go back to your seat. I'm going to use you in a second. Can I just get some, can I, the, the woman in the, with the water bottle, yeah, you. Yeah, you know why? Because you, you even have the same color sweater on this here, so this is perfect. And what's your name? Molly. Molly, what's your background? My dad's Irish. Your dad's Irish? Yeah. God, bless it. All right. Okay. So here, can you guys, can you mix up, though? Um, actually, just stand. It'll be easier if you just stand and mix yourselves up so you're not standing next to each other. Like, you go down to the end, bro. You go to that end. Maybe you go to this end. Okay, really fast. We're going to do this We're super fast. You're going to go first. All right. Ooh, it's me. Yep, yep. Okay, which two? Yeah, you can stay out there. Which, who's most? All right, what's your name, bro? Nate. Nate. All right, man. And you're a science major? Yeah, science. Who's most ge genetically similar? The most genetic. Which, which people are most genetically similar? Put them together. Dude, you can't offend anybody. Okay. Um, let's see. Talk in the mic. The most genetically similar? Do I have to do like pairs? Or yeah, like just point them out. You can just point them out. You two both have dark hair and dark eyes. So you guys. Okay, so, so like these two guys? Two, no, that's all good. So groups? these two guys here. You can just stay where you're at. All right, who else? Okay. Um, I would, uh, <laughs> so you two. Okay, who else? I mean, there's only two left. And you would put them together? <laughs> but they might go with somebody else, like she might be, go next to her. No. <laughs> okay, so you would put them together? Yeah, I mean, they both have like lighter colored hair. I don't know. That's like all I'm really going All right. About, okay, cool. All right, man. Hang, hang on. Here we go. Ready? Next one, man. You're in. Oh, you're shy, aren't you? What's your name? Tammy. Tammy, take the mic. Okay. Identify which people are most genetically similar. Were you a biology major? Yeah. Oh, this should be easy for you. No, Talking to me. This is Tammy, who's shy, but she's got it right here. You can't go wrong. You can't make a mistake. Who's genetically most alike? Um. 
go fast. You can't offend anybody. There's nothing racist in this. There's nothing you could say that would ever be racist. <laughs> Unless you said what he said. <laughs> no, seriously, you didn't say anything racist. Dude, come on. No, seriously, go ahead. It's really fast. You got 20 seconds. Yeah, just pick the people to go together. Who's most genetically similar? The two guys? No. The girl in him? Okay, got you. Structure, okay. The phenotype of the face, go. Next one. And then these two. The two? No, these two. These two? Her, him and her? Yes. Okay. And then, and then the two black women. Okay, got it. All right. All right, Simon. Simon. You're on, pal. Simon says, who is most genetically similar? Let's go. Did you do a hit back there, bro? All right. Who's most genetically similar? So just pick two of them. Put, no, you, just, well, you can put, no, they're all like pair them up together or put them together. It could be threes, it could be fours, it could be whatever. Go fast, though. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I like you two guys. The two guys? Talk into the mic, dude. Oh, I like you two guys. You okay, got the, the same guys. color hair. <laughs> Both kind of cute. That's what I, I'm, now I'm thinking that, right? Okay. Right? Wait, Simon, do you play for that team? Mm. No. <laughs> that's good. Well, Maybe that's, in next life. Dude, but it's great that you even could, would say that, you know what I mean? Awesome. That's what we want. I, I, can't, I don't know what you're yeah. saying, but. No, why wouldn't you look? <laughs> no, you can look at a guy and say, I think he's really cute. Absolutely. You know? Why couldn't I? Ah, exactly. I know. I'm telling you. Because you might become gay. That's why you wouldn't want to say that. Yeah, I don't think that can happen. All right. All you right, never right. know, my friend. Hmm. So am I, wait, am yeah. I just putting these people in like multiple Yeah, no, groups? you think they're most genetically similar, the two guys. Who else? Oh, as each other? Yep. Right. Well, whatever, yep. I got you. Can I ask where people... Oh, no, that's No, cheating. you just look at just them. Just by now. looking. Go fast. We don't have much time. Hmm. I'm going to put her with them, too. You're going to put her with those two guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and she's going to go with the two black women? Or she's just on her own? I think she's on her own. All right. She kind of looks different than anyone else. And these and then those two together. These two go, two go together? All right. That's cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Are you going to tell you? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you the answer here. First off, you can have it. You can sit down if you want, and you can watch from your seat. Or you can stand up here. I don't really care. Listen, man. First off. Evolution, here's, here's the beginning, you ready? That's a long way of me saying the following. Evolution is a trickster because of all of our DNA admixture, all of the markers that we carry around with us, 0.01% of them ref are, reference our external features. So it's a very tiny amount. When you see people, look, the two of you are fundamentally alike. It has nothing to do with your... In fact, they're, these... These, these two, what's your name again? Molly. Molly and Hannah. Hannah. Molly and Hannah, in all likelihood, are more alike than Hannah is with Mimuna. 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 In, there's more genetic variation within Africa than between Africa and other parts of the world. And so we look at Mimuna and we look at Holly, Hannah. Hannah. God, it's terrible. I'm going to use name tags in the future. We look at Maymuna and we look at Hannah and you just think, oh my God, look, if you take your glasses off for a second, it's just like, yeah, of course, they're exactly like, no, listen, listen y'all, right? Remember this, genetically speaking, these two are, is li is more, are more likely or is certainly as likely to be more different than these two. 
And, or, and th- it's a little different with Europeans, right? Because of the genetic variation in, in Europe is much, is, is different, right? But like, look, 0.01%. What we do is we see external features and then we imagine that that's the genetic admixture of each person. So we just, th- I look at you, I look at you, I look at you, and I just think, oh, okay, well, you're so different than her and, and you're so different than him. By the way, he's ha- half Chinese and half German, by the way. You can see it, right? So we just imagine that, that we start coming up with all these ideas about human beings and about their groups and about their behavior and about who they are and what they are. And then we start linking genetics, i.e. what we look like, i.e. our DNA, with things like IQ or with things like temperament or with all sorts of other things that have really nothing to do with anything. Like, you're really all the same. We're fundamentally the same. We just have these tiny differences that reference our skin or like our, our ears. What's your name again? Tammy. Tammy. Like Tammy's hair and Tammy's forehead and Tammy's eyebrows and her ears and her height and all sorts of things. That, we, that they're tiny. They're very tiny differences, right? But fundamentally, Tammy is the same as Maimuna. I got it, right? You see that? And so as we walk through this world and we start thinking about these kinds of differences and evolution and what it means, you know, human beings around the world, we are fundamentally all alike. And these differences are really, really tiny. And they're genetic markers that really can have something to do with our ears. But really, all of the fundamental markers that make us who we are are really the same. And so this is really a, a good experiment, right? Because, yeah, you guys really you do look alike and yet whatever you're you're is different or the same as anybody else you see that you get that right and if you allow ourselves when we allow ourselves to really walk into that it changes everything it changes the way that we imagine and we come to understand the world okay thanks you all right okay so here um hey you know here, okay, who's my, who, okay, wait, wait, so where, wh- come here, where are you, fr- where are you from? Milan Italy. Milan, Italy. Okay, so here, are you ready? St- with, stand up. And one of the things, here, you can come, come down to the front really fast. What's your name? Francesca. Francesca. Francesca, right? How do I do? All right, so. So, are you here as a, an exchange student, or you're, no. so you're studying here? What year are you? Senior. Senior? Okay. So, one of the things that really stands out for me is how localized some differences are, and differences that you really only see if you're looking for them. So, one of the, my very first experience of this was, and then I'm going to have you do something in class. You can sit up here. But my first experience in this was... Um, when I was young, I studied in Spain, and then I did the thing that lots of people do. I jumped on that, got a year rail pass, and I traveled around Europe, right? And when I would stop off at different countries, I would start seeing people that I recognized from back home. And they just, there were these features that were fairly common, like, you know, when I'm in Italy, and I was just in Italy a couple weeks ago, and I had seen Ital- Italians that I, I like, whoa, you look like so-and-so back home, like my Italian friend and so on. But if you, if you, just you didn't know that if you just sort of walked through Europe you wouldn't see it right but you know like you know if I just transported you right now to Germany and just all you did was see like a hundred Germans and not that they're taller or whatever just their faces you would know you're in Germany you would know I'm not in Italy and if I did the same thing if I sent you to Italy you would know you're in Italy but like if you've never done that if you haven't traveled, say, in a place like that, you wouldn't know. Francesca would know. I would know because I do it a lot. Some of you would know, but you would never know. But you would know, you know you're in France, you know you're in the UK. You just, you got it, right? Like Portugal, you just get the Portugal, you got the Port- the Greece. The Greeks are like, oh my God, right? So what I want you to do right now, as quickly as you can, pick out some Italian people in class who have Italian ancestry who you just know, like they look like people back home, man. Like, who, who do you see? You can, you, can, you can walk up really fast. Let's see if you can do this. Maybe you, no. <laughs> you. 
Dude, okay. No, 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 there's no, go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Yeah. You have no Italian ancestry? America, Americans can be complex because we blend it all in and sometimes right. like we blend it together and it comes out looking Italian. Right. But nonetheless, just see if you got anybody. See um, if you can pick anybody up. The guy with the glasses there? Yeah. 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 Mm. I, would, I would say that about her. Yeah. You know, like, look, it's, it's like you, those, keep looking. Those of you who are, you know, it, it's like, um, we could do this with Africans and African Americans, right? I've done this in the past. It's like Africans are, like, man, you, you are, you, like, you are not African American, right? Like, I immediately see you, and I know, like, no, no, you're not, that. you're African, right? And I would see you and say, no, 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 you're African, right? Like, I, you just see it, but it's a subtle thing. You don't, but you know, like, you, you know if you hang out, with Africans and you hang out with African Americans and you walk into a room filled with black people and it's like the you know touch of Africa event or something you have no idea it's the touch of Africa event you know it is not the African an African American event you know you're like damn these are Africans here these are not African Americans like you just know that it's and not by clothing not by anything it's just face it's just face right do you see anybody else Yeah, I would say uh, she kind of. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You, the blonde girl, and yeah. Nah, she no. doesn't have it. She's not I Italian. Say, no. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Do you're the expert, right? <laughs> Want me to go on? Nah, this is good. Wait, I'm looking myself. No. There aren't many. Wait, okay. Who has who has Italian? Who has a lot of Italian ancestry? Okay, raise your hands, dude. She was right there, yeah. right in front of you. Now you see it. Look at her, yeah. dude. How about the guy right there? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Here, the woman in the red, stand up really fast. Are you? Do you have a lot of Italian? What is it? Twenty percent. Who has a hundred percent Italian? You do. Dude, look at her. Stand up real fast. You're a hundred percent Italian. Take your hat off and look in the, look in the in the camera. Yo, can you put can, can you put white on? By the way, on the overhead, and dude, yeah, look at that dude, yeah. All right, man. Okay, okay, it's all good. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good try. All right. Okay, so listen, man. Let's do this. Um, do you know what white passing is? White passing, yeah. I could talk about white passing. You mean passing as white? You know, we'll get, we'll, we can get to that actually. Not today, but okay. Um, so here's the idea. What we know, what we see are all of these features that we have. It's not true across the board, but we tend to see that as the body adapts, we, we see all of these, again, these differences, right? So for example... In really hot climates, the people historically or whose peoples or ancestors have evolved in really hot climates, we tend to see people who are really tall and thin because being tall and thin dissipates heat. So, you, you know, we see this for a while. The NBA was really interested in going into the Nilotic region of Africa, looking for really tall Africans like that one player back in the day, a long time ago, before you, most of you all were born, this guy, Manu Bol, who was you know, like seven, six or something like that. And so really tall and thin people, short and squat people tend to retain heat much better. So, you know, if you have the genetics uh, where you, everybody in your family and your extended family tend to be shorter and squatter, a little bit wider, a little bit shorter, that's because probably your ancestors evolved in a region that was much colder, right? Or at least moved to, or evolved in that region. They may have moved somewhere else, but that is where that kind of body type, we tend to see it, as opposed to tall and thin. So all of these different kinds of things. So let, me, let me show you, let's do a couple more, right? Um, let's, let me do eyes. Let me, I need someone who's Asian, who's got a really distinct epicanthic eye fold, right? Let me... Hang on, let me, let me look at... Yeah, you do, actually. Can we use you? 
Yeah, all right. Here. So. Um, okay, so what's your name? Yeri. What is it? Yeri. Yeri? Where, where's your family from? South Korea. I'm South an international Korea? student. Yeah? yeah? Okay, so here. Look. We're gonna go into. We're gonna look into here. I want to. Are you cool? Are you cool with? We're gonna yeah. look at your eyes. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Come get close to this. And what you want to do? Does anyone have? Does someone have a pencil I could use? Because I need some. Dude, thanks, man. I'm not gonna poke you in the eye. I'm just gonna be a lot easier. Well, I might if I'm not careful, but I'll be cool. Okay. So listen. Look at her. Man. Turn. Okay. Hang on. Right there. See. Okay, I'm definitely not going to poke you, but I got to really show this. I'll use the, this side, okay? Look at right here. See the fold on her eye? See how it comes down right there? And what that does is it, it's just, it's called the epicanthic fold. And it's not just in people of Asian ancestry. We see it in Africa. We've seen it in certain peoples in, in Europe, and we don't know why, but we see it a fair amount in Africa. But one thing it does is it gives that almond shape. Look at how, it's Yeri? Yeri. Yeri. Look at how Yeri's eyes have that almond shape to them compared to my eyes. Hang, hang on, look at my eyes. <laughs> right? It, they just don't have, <laughs> right? It, it doesn't have the shape. So here, so therefore, what you have is, and also what we see with people of East Asian ancestry here. So turn to the side a little bit. Dude, I could bring George back. George, you got to come back up here, man, because you have a criminal forehead. I can work on that. All right. You're good with it. Look at how well, the other thing is the brow bone in East Asians. Look at this guy's criminal forehead, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So what? So, so check this out. Look at Yuri's. Look at her. This is the brow bone. Okay. And what we see... Turn right, so it's exactly on. Okay, hang on, you're going to get this camera right here on the overhead. Okay, okay, so right there. You're cool with me touching your hair and stuff? Are we yeah, good? Yeah. All right, okay. So this is the brow bone. Look at on East Asians, what we see a lot is a, a much flatter brow bone here. And notice that from the, the brow to the eyes, this tends to be flat. And why is that? Probably sexual selection. Maybe it was genetic mutation at some point. Meaning, not mutation in a bad thing. Like somebody or for some reason, something led to that with some people. And then it became part of a, a way of being. And then it just became like, uh, who knows, like sexual selection. It became something that was seen as really beautiful. And then it hung on, even like the epicanthic fool. Look at George's brow, however, for example. This is the classic European criminal forehead right? Look at, how, look at how his brow sticks out over his eyes right here. See that? Like, so if I do this, hang on, bro, I'm not going to stick you. Look at that. You, you can't touch, but you can't do that with Yuri because you're, it's much more, it's much flatter, okay? And these are, why is that? It just is, right? It is. So some people have this idea that, so Asians will have not only the epicanthic eye fold, but a much narrower slit in the eye because, you know, evolved in like windy, arid climates and that kind of stuff, but that doesn't appear to be the case, really. And so, whereas we see this with Europeans. You got it? Is that cool? And it just is, right? It doesn't matter. Thanks. Wait, hang on. Just sit here. For, thanks, bro. All right, man. Um, so listen, here's the thing. You ready? And clap for the criminal over there. You know what I mean? The criminal forehead thing, right? It's just like, well, you don't know because you'd had, in my generation, that's what it was. So here's the point. I take a naturalistic approach to bodies. So I happen to be one of these kind of really unique, I, I think I'm fairly unique. I don't have any, I didn't grow up with, nor do I have a, any sense of beauty at all. Like I don't look at one person or another person and think, whoa, that person's beautiful or they have really beautiful hair and they have not beautiful hair. I don't live in that world I, because I'm too much of a, of a, of a, like an evolution, a thinker of bodies and shapes and faces and so on to be caught up with believing something that somebody else tells me to be true. So like, I'm not going to look at your eyes and say, whoa, gosh, he has such beautiful eyes. Because, why is it, why? Because someone told me that to be true? Like, I don't have that. You have beautiful eyes, and George has beautiful eyes. And 
dude, even you have beautiful eyes, right? And so, like, it's all part of the package. Like, our eyes, like your eyes, your hair, your lips, your face, every, your nose, mine, everybody. It's, it, it, it comes from a long history of people passing genes down to their progeny. And some genes were more adaptable to certain regions. Some genes were more appreciated by others. And so they said, whoa, the people with those eyes, you know, we find that more attractive. And so therefore they became more eligible partners or whatever. It just doesn't matter. Even though you're like, so you're just beautiful in and of yourself. But when, what we, where we get lost is thinking that um, some things are just more beautiful than others and more perfect than others. And, so, and I take a naturalistic approach. And it goes back to that very first day when somebody said, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, or I don't feel, are you comfortable sitting here? Are you all right? Okay. I don't feel, I, I feel like maybe, just like what we, when we were talking about skin, dude, it doesn't matter whatever your skin is whatever your nose is whatever whatever it is that's what you have that's what allowed to probably allowed in most cases allowed your ancestors to survive where they survived so if you didn't have that you wouldn't have survived and you wouldn't be here it's just not what it is it doesn't matter it's skin it's nose it's hair it's all the things so i don't know this is this thing that for me it's very naturalistic i just say oh wow look at your eyes or look at your hair or simon look at his eyes or whatever it is it just doesn't matter look at my own it's irrelevant and so that's kind of what what i'm after here anyway do you want to say anything you don't have to say anything well i know okay you can say you're korean right yeah i'm south korean so have you which in like there's a lot of um, facial, bodily and facial augmentation in yeah. Korea. Mm -hmm. And what is, what's behind that? Like, what's your sense of that? Um, We're going to come back and talk about yeah, this. Yeah, I just feel like, well, a lot of people say that in Korea, people always want to be perfect and stuff, but I don't think that's true. It's just that, like, in general, even when you're in high school, middle school, in elementary, you always wear, like, school uniforms. So everyone, like, has the same hair. Well, when I was in middle school, like, there was, like, a rule in school that you have to cut your hair in, like, a certain length, and, like, you can't wear makeup, you can't dye your hair, you can't perm your hair, you can't put nail colors, earrings, or anything. So you have to be, like, just plain natural. And so a lot of people, I feel like from that, it's like you can't express your beauty or your self-identity through appearance. So mm -hmm. I feel like from that, it kind of just, like, made them, oh, now I'm, like, going to college, and, like, I'm graduating high school, so maybe that's the reason why they want to do plastic surgery, but then um, it's like kind of a norm where in Korea it's not like considered such a big deal where it's like, oh, like she's doing something or he's doing something, it's very inappropriate. It's just kind of like some things that, it's kind of like positively, I guess, accepted, not yeah. like that negative at all. So I feel like that's the reason why, but I don't personally think that it's a bad thing. It's just, I mean, I'm biased because I'm Korean, but I, like a lot of the times American media is like, oh, Korean girls always get this and that. I don't think that's like a big matter. If, if you want to do certain things, I would say go yeah. for it, you know. Yeah, so. just do whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how okay, I feel. we'll come back to this. I want to yeah. talk about it more. So, yeah, thanks. All right, Mom. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I definitely want to talk about it more. We'll come back because we're going to do bunch of stuff on Asia. Hey, can I, can we do this really fast? Um, I, I need, I need three, I need someone in class who feels like they have, they might have what they would consider to be the, the largest nose in the class. Who, who, Nah, they, no, you're not even close. Nah, nah, nah. It's, okay, I got it, but no, 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 come on. I need someone. Dude, hang on, hang on, are you ready? We're doing a naturalistic approach to bodies, right? So what happens is, let me walk us through here. Wait, come back. What happens is that we associate positivity and negativity to certain things. 
and as we associate positivity and negativity to certain things, then we start judging those things. And I'm not judging at all. There's no judgment here. The, ju the, the, the issue is gen there, each one of us has this genetic admixture which comes from people who preceded us, all of our relatives, and all of our things like our noses and so on come from this long lineage of our family tree. And our noses, our lips, our eyes, whatever it is, it's just perfect. It's beautiful, right? So who in the class would I think that they probably have one of the largest noses in the class? Dude, you think it might be you? Let me see. Let's look at you. Turn to the side. Yeah, it could be. Maybe. Not. I don't think so, actually. But here, come down. No, come down the front. So, anybody? Let's see. Let's just see. What's your name? Uh, Bryce. Ray? Bryce. Turn, Brett? Bryce. Bryce. Yeah. All right, Bryce. Turn to the side. <laughs> That's not a very... <laughs> dude, hang on. That's not a large nose. I mean, hang on. No, it, it, it's... A, it's not large. It's not so. who who has a nose that you would say, yeah, my nose might actually be even larger. Doesn't matter. There's no judgment here, y'all. Right? Like, like, come on, let's go. Somebody from the Middle East for sure. Where? What's your ancestry? No clue. You don't have any clue? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Give me some. Okay. Next person in class who thinks they probably might have the smallest nose in class. Who's that? You can have a seat on the table. Who thinks they might have the smallest nose in class? Dude, can you come down? Can you, whoever it is, yeah, come down. Wait, who thinks they have the smallest nose in class? Someone was pointing. Dude, you think it's you? Might be. All right, come down. Mr. Flyers guy. D hang on, though, Bryce, come on, man. Who has a nose that's much longer? Because his nose is not very long. Like the nostrils are really long. Seriously? Let me take your glasses off. Oh, yeah, all right. Hey. Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know, my friend. Hey, Sam. Yeah. All right, listen, man. You ready? Hey, Sam. Yeah. It's a small nose over here. Dude. A small nose? You looking we, for a small nose? Nah, we really need a big one, man. We need a big one now? Yeah. We got uh, a small I think. Okay, bro, what's your name again? Max. Max and Bryce. All right? So listen, man. Here's the deal. You ready? What's your ancestry, by the way? Uh, Italian and uh, German. Does he look Italian? He My grandfather right? was from Italy, so. Your grandmother's from My Italy? My grandfather was from Italy, yeah. Your grandfather? Bro, and you don't know your ancestry? No. You're in, definitely English, man. You gotta, I mean, you're from, the, you're somewhere in, the, in Great Britain. I mean, somewhere in there. Yeah. Scottish, English, somewhere, right? Let me, let me, yeah. Okay. So listen, here's the thing. You ready? Look at, and then look at my nose, right? My nose is really, like, can you see it? Like, really thin. And like even on the side, it's got that. It's, really, it's pretty small. My nose is actually really small. And it's, 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 you see this right here because I got in playing, when I was in high school, I uh, broke my nose playing football. And like the helmet came down and crushed my nose. But um, dudes, so here's the thing, right? If you talk about, do people, how is your nose, dude? Do people talk about your nose or did you talk um, about it? Someone just messaged me and said to raise my hand, so I did. Yeah? <laughs> Really, you never talk about your nose? No one ever talked about the fact that your nose is, appears to be larger than the average nose? Um, I mean, sometimes. Yeah? I mean, I look in the mirror and I think so too, but like... But it's all good, dude. It's your yeah. nose. You, you want to grab onto those things that really stand out about us. Because most of us don't have anything that stands out about us, so at least you have a nose, and that's <laughs> like really cool. And bro, do people talk about your nose? Uh, in high school, I remember a couple of times people told me that my nose was pretty small. And uh, like that's wait, like, hang on, I'm hang like, on. Yeah, uh, I'm still kind of self-conscious about it. You're self-conscious like, yeah, about like, it. Yeah, like I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like my nose at all. Dude, 
How come? Like what? Like what's behind? I don't that? know. I I don't know. Like it's kind of like upturned, and I don't know. It's a beautiful nose. Oh, thank you, thank you, buddy. Bryce, is t- is that not a beautiful nose? Yeah, it is. What do you think about Bryce's nose? I got to put my glasses. Put your glasses back on. I'm blind. Sorry. That's a. I'd want that nose. <laughs> I'd like that nose. You like that nose? I like that nose. So here's the deal. Do you know? Do you have any idea why noses are different? Like, do you understand why they're different sizes? Uh, I actually have no idea. You have no idea. Do you have any idea? Anyone want to take? A, anyone have a guess? Anyone want to take a shot at it? Bro, hang on. Do you you want to take a shot, bro? Take a shot, my friend. Why are noses different sizes? Do longer noses warm up the air more when it's going into your lungs? It would seem to be that way. Yep. So with longer noses, you have a longer nasal passage, and the longer nasal passage, especially in cold climates, that went in order to really get on in cold climates, like you know, like for example, last week when it was really cold, or it's going to get cold again this weekend. Go outside when it gets really cold and do this. As, as hard and fast as you can and feel the pain of that. And that's not good, right? You feel it? And so you have a longer nasal passage. So the no- if you're going to have a longer nasal passage, your nose is necessarily going to be l- larger, right? And then w- what that's doing is warming the air before it gets to the lungs. And that's a good thing. So people who grow up in, in arid, more humid climates are going to tend to have smaller noses. So we see like a lot of people in sub-Saharan Africa tend to not have really large noses. People in certain parts of East Asia tend not to have really large noses. Whereas in Europe, right, we're going to, in, or in parts of the Middle East, we're going to see some really much larger noses. I mean, there are, like, with not just, like, you don't, you just don't have much space here for a long nasal passage. And so that can be a problem. And so yours, do people in your family have your nose or is it? A genetic mutation of some sort. It's, it's got to be because, like, on my mom's side, she's like part Native American, and my brother has like a like a Native American looking like nose. with the with the little hook. Yeah, yeah, ab- yeah, there. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's really interesting. So we're passing this this like really complex arrangement of genes down every time that we make children, and the genes could come from lots of different places. Do, be, do people in your family have your nose? Yeah. So it's co- it's a common. Yeah. Well, what's your last name? Uh, Allison. Allison. So it's like the Allison nose. Yeah. Which is great. Like it's a, it's dude, it is what it is. So when you like, when you look in a mirror and what you see is really what allowed your, fa- your ancestry to pass on all those genes for all those years. It's awesome. But what we do is we get caught up in things like noses and eyes and like, I don't know, lips or whatever. So it's cool. And, and in your, and in certain regions of the world, when you travel, once again, what, what, I, what I, w- I was talking about with Trent Francesca, it's like as you go around, say, Europe, or you go around Africa, or you go around South America, or Asia, different places, and you see particular kinds of noses that are much more localized to certain populations. So like when I'm in Poland, for example, there's just this Polish, or like in Ireland, does anybody have this? Anybody Irish in the class? There's like probably five different faces in Ireland that in, in, uh, that I see all the time when I'm in Ireland, right? And one face is a nose that has its little bulbous at the end of it. It's like a little round tip at the end. Really common among the Irish. Don't see it anywhere else. Whereas the English have this pointed nose like you and me. My dad is actually 67% Irish. So. Yeah. Does he, yeah, exactly. So does he have that, does he have that like bulbous? With, yeah. He yeah. took the ancestry thing. He I took don't know the mine ancestry. specifically. Well, dude, you're going to be Irish. Yeah, but not sure. like. And you're going to be. This is what I mean, like the UK, right? You're up in that. The Irish in the UK is similar. All right, man. Dude, all right, thanks, Doug. All right, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Okay. Are right, you ready? Let's do one final thing. Can we do hair really fast? Um, can I, can I, can I, I need somebody, this is going to be a, someone of African ancestry, probably, almost certainly, with like type 4 hair. I need someone with type 4 coils, like tight, co- tight coils, man, like really tight coils. Is that you? Are you, would you be like, t- 4C? Dude, you're 4C? You're not 4 anybody 4C? Anybody in here is 4C? 
if you if you if you are you probably know what I'm talking about but you're four we might just take you at four anybody anybody 4c any black people any people of African ancestry 4c is like coiled see we we have this can you just can we're just gonna take come on all right and I need someone with really with wavy hair like really pretty seriously wavy hair yeah who's got really wavy hair dude we're gonna go with you and then someone with cur- you're a curly we're gonna go curly hair we need someone with just like a little bit of like wave straight hair but waves in it that's not your normal hair right is that how is that how it is okay we'll take you and then we need someone with super straight hair man like their hair is just straight someone who hasn't volunteered yet it could be friendship is that you yeah let's do you it's just straight that is straight you don't get any straighter than that okay so listen man. so so he, oh yeah you gotta go here let's all four of you sit up here if you can yeah here so here's the deal um do you know do you know why hair is different do you know where do you know where like li- like four hair like coiled hair by the way we talk about people often talk about kinked hair right so people of sub-saharan african and, and not just sub-saharan african but also by the way can you bro can you go back to the map i just want to show you there are so when we follow this out right here in in there are uh, populations of people in this region of the world who are essentially black. If I showed you their photos, they would look black. And you would think they're black, but they're Asian. And that's just because there's a, groups of people that just carried their admixture down to all sorts of places. So they also have, well, people often talk about kinked hair, but it's not really kinked. When you look at it under a, a microscope and really carefully, it's coiled. It's not, and so it's a very different thing. Whereas your hair is coiled also, but it's just loosely, co- much more loosely coiled. And your hair is not coiled because the coil never comes back around. For wait, wait, what's your name, by the way, again? Can we just do names? Destiny. Destiny. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda. Shannon. Shannon. Gwen. Gwen. So your hair is not coiled at all because it doesn't coil around. It's just like, you know, it's got the waves in it, and your hair is absolutely straight. So her hair would be, when we look at types of hair, she is type um, one, two, three, and four. And, and in, four, in one, there's only one type of one. But in four, there's like, there are three types, basically, 4A, 4B, 4C. 4C is the really the tightest possible coil. So like, what... Um, how did you decide that you're four, four and not four C? Like, how did that come? Like that you, like you said to me, yeah, I'm four, but I'm not four C. Like, um, I just, I just know my hair. Like, I know it's four B. Like, where'd you learn that? Uh, my mom told me. Yeah. And where did she get it? Like, just looking at it, just observing. No, my aunt does hair, so. Oh mine, right, okay, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So like, she's really thinking about this stuff, right? Not really. Yeah. So do you know why, do you know where four, four hair comes from? I'm going to assume Africa. I know, but do you know the reason for it? No. Anybody? Do you have any idea? So, does, do, you, do you got it, bro? Dude, hang on. Simon might have the answer to this. Oh, my God. So let's see. Is it to be- better retain moisture? Yeah, that's one for sure. Yeah, retain moisture. What else? And probably dissipate heat as well. What's that? Dissipate heat. Dissipate heat. Okay. Helps Got keep that. your hair up out of your face as well. Not up and out of your face so much, but dude, there it is. Look at that. Okay. What? So here's the thing. What you see when you have tight coils in the hair is it's going to stick up. Okay. It's not going to lie flat. Amanda's hair is lying flat to her head. Oh, wait. What's your name? Gwen, Gwen's hair is lying flat to her head. In really hot climates, where's the sun going to go? The sun is going to go right on her scalp. It's going to go right on her head. And that's a problem in really hot climates. Gwen's, uh, the ancestries of the five, the ancestors of the five of us up here, we did not evolve in a region where people had hats and Nike hats and that kind of stuff, right? Or Nike or whatever you say. It's like you get, the sun's blaring down and so she has no protection. So Gwen, when you take a shower, your hair dries really, really fast. 
Well, comparatively speaking, it drives fast. And it's going to drive faster than, what's your name again? Shannon. Shannon? It's going to drive faster than Shannon's hair. And it's going to drive fast. You're Amanda, right? And, there, and her hair is going to drive more slowly. And your hair, Destiny, right, is going to drive the slowest. And so, and here's the other side, right? If you, so you, if you let your hair completely go, and you don't lock it down in any way, or you don't have any extent, you have nothing, right? You just let your hair go. The natural way of your hair is going to be to grow out because that's the tight curls. And the more it grows out of your head, the further the heat of the sun is away from your scalp. And so in really hot, arid climates, two things are going to happen. One is anytime you get moist, the moisture is going to stay in your scalp, in your hair. It's going to help keep you cool. And number two, it's going to keep the sun away from your scalp. Whereas me or Gwen, right? Gwen and I, the sun is really going to hit us, and that's really super dangerous. And so if our ancestors grew up in a region or are from a region where it's really, really hot, we need that extra protection. And so coiled hair, tightly coiled hair that's going to stick up and protect our head is really going to be important. Hey, by the way, What's one thing that people say about your hair that they don't say about other people? I just want to go down the line. What do they say about your hair? What do people say? What do you hear about your hair? And anybody. White people. And no, anybody. Black people. Whoever. Black people. Black people? Um, when I was younger, they would say it was nappy. But nowadays it's, oh, I love your curls. Because it's like now they see the value in I guess black people hair or four 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 type hair. Four type but white hair, so people say it, it looks so nice. How do you get it like that? Yeah. Um I love your like my hair could be looking so wild to like the black people out there know my hair look wild and white people would be like, It's great, I love it. It looks yeah. so nice. Because it's <laughs> cool. Yeah, it but come on, imagine nice. if you had hair like me. It's like it's boring, man. You want to That's bust true. it out, you know? It's always boring, right? Which is one of the reasons why a lot of black people straighten hair. It's like people, we just want to do different things, right? So we curl, we want it curly, we want it straight, we want it this, we want it that. Black hair is very do, versatile. Yeah, it's a big, what do people say about your hair? Um, wait, are we doing black hair? Anybody, or? yeah. Um, I get told that, that they wish my, their hair curled like mine. They say it's big. Um... And I have nice girls. <laughs> Most people, it seems like a disproportionate number of people are socialized to believe that you have really ideal hair. Yeah, I get, I don't really get any bad stuff yeah. about it. Yeah, right. And that, and you, you, you have your hair. This is the thing, right? It's like we, we're just socialized to believe certain things. What do people say about your hair? Um, they usually ask me how I get it this way. How you get it that way? Yeah. So or, people like Gwen ask you, who has really straight hair and she might want to put a little curl in it? Typically, yeah. yeah. And how do you get it that way? You just get out of the shower and let it dry? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do people say about your hair? Because you also um, you have awesome they hair, They just too. say it's, like, really shiny. It's, like, it. Did they ask you if you straighten it? Yeah. Could you even straighten? He's talking to the mic. Could you even straighten your hair? I mean, it kind of looks like this when it's Dude, I don't think it could be any straighter than it is. Have you ever curled it? Put curls yeah. in it? It curls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but do you do that just as a way to change it up? No. Yeah? You don't? I'm just really lazy. Yeah? Wait, you're lazy? Yeah. I like yeah, I got Yeah, I know. I know how that is. Much to the chagrin of my wife. What's that? I said I can't afford to be lazy. Yeah, it's hard, man. All right, listen, we'll come back. We'll come back to this. Uh, see you on, hey, thanks, you all. Right? Thanks, thanks man. Um, we'll see you on Thursday.